Perfect. We're recording. Yeah. yeah. So this year has been the year of growth, setting a foundation and really setting ourselves up for success in this upcoming year. So it's been a lot of really just building, growing, learning. Um, and we're excited to share the triumphs that we've had, kind of the progress we've been uh, working through, um, and also some exciting projects. And we do have a special announcement at the end. So we're throwing in the holiday cheer, and we're excited kind of just to showcase what we've been working on. So we'll start with December updates. And normally we do our town halls once a month. And uh, usually the structure is we kind of showcase what we've been working on in the last month, uh, chat through kind of anything that we need to, you know, highs, lows, um, big things that we've accomplished, but also things that we may need assistance with. So we'll start with that. And then we're gonna recap um, everything else from 2022. So starting with Art Basel, um, the last that we kind of updated everyone, we were getting ready to do our event. Um, so we did a Women in Web3 networking event. And essentially what it was is um, we handpicked every single woman attendee who was coming to this event. And the goal of this was to have either someone relevant in Web3, someone looking to break through in Web3, an executive in Web3, an investor or a creator. And so really the, the biggest goal was to get a lot of relevant people in the room so that the networking would be powerful and meaningful. And then we were able to also have six um, different speakers come in, just powerhouse women that I admire so much. Um, so that was a really exciting thing for us. So what we were able to do is partner with World of Women and BFF where essentially we were um, inviting their community to connect there. And so they gave, they basically ran giveaways and gave uh, a certain amount of slots to their holders. Um, and that way they could meet in person at our event. Um, and also we had a BFF speaker, um, Jackie Courtney, who was representing the BFF community as a founder that all of these BFF community members got to connect with in real life. Very similarly with World of Women, um, we had the community, community manager, Kashvi, come in and all of the BFF people were able to meet this girl that, you know, everyone looks up to, is connecting with on Discord constantly. And so it was really awesome to just see people um, kind of meeting the ladies that they've been admiring virtually for so long. Um, and I think that was like a really fun, um, interesting aspect of it. But our biggest goal was to provide value um, to all of the attendees, but also for the attendees to bring value to the speakers. Um, so we walked away feeling so good about that. It was an intimate event. Um, we did it at a waterfront property in Miami. Um, and it was about 150 people primarily female, I would say 10% male. Yeah. So still welcoming male because, you know, we want everyone included, but it was a pretty powerful uh, house of women for sure, uh, which was really, really special. And um, we we consider it a success. Yeah, great we're really, success. you know, excited moving forward. We see the <laughs> demand for women in Web3 really wanting to connect in real life. So it was very validating for us and just the way that we can work with other Web3 communities. Um, you know, people don't need to compete, we need to work together. Um, and we all have similar goals at the end of the day, connecting, lifting one another up. Um, so it was really exciting for us. Great job. And up next, we're doing a first sneak peek. So one of the first surprises of the town hall. So uh, here goes, we, we also haven't done a video on a town hall. So hopefully you guys can hear. So that was uh, just a quick sneak peek of um, of Rancho Santana. So this was an incredible retreat center that we got to do our 
fourth retreat review with, with this is being our uh, first international retreat center that we've gotten to experience and to potentially look at as partners and just overall just get to experience what they have to offer. And um, Mo and I were both blown away. We got to bring our videographer along to capture a lot of the content and we have some incredible updates just as we continue to move through it but a little sneak peek in some of the activities and programming that they have right on site. Um, they have surfing, mountain biking, yoga. There's a turtle sanctuary where they are helping rehabilitate turtles and just the overall nesting. So um, this is the first year that they've activated the sanctuary and they've had over 5,000 hatchings compared to the year before where they only had 1,000 hatchings. So right there, they're just doing a lot of positives in the overall like environment in Nicaragua. And we're just really excited to dive deep into what we can activate there and just exploring them as potential partners across the board. So Mo and I have some more exciting news that hopefully we'll be able to announce in January as far as uh, retreats and overall experiences. But this is just a little sneak peek into um, one of our retreat reviews that we've gotten to do. And we spent a lot, we spent four days there uh, mid-December and you have anything you want to touch on about Rancho? Yeah, so I'll talk about my favorite aspect of the entire property. And I've been like geeking out about this <laughs> since leaving, honestly, since learning about this. So they actually have a carpentry um, type of workshop on site. And so every single wood thing in the entire property, every door, stop signs, like everything you can imagine was made on site by a carpenter. And essentially what they do is with any like leftover wood, they leave it um, in a certain place where locals can bring it home and use it for their fires to like cook food or whatever in their own home. But then also that sawdust is then used in the garden as compost. And then all of the garden um, ingredients, I guess I could say, <laughs> um, goes directly to the restaurants on the property. So 80% of the food in the restaurants is directly from the garden on site. And I just like love that circle of life from tree that's literally on the property um, to sitting and eating like a delicious meal that has like kind of a connection to that. So I love that. I thought it was super full circle and just like inspirational for the way like I hope to live my life someday. So we learned a lot of things about sustainability and how we can kind of like do little things in our own lives right now um, to kind of like better the planet, which was unexpected, yeah. I feel, but a huge takeaway. So a lot of really inspirational aspects and just the way they're building a community slowly, but intentionally um, is very exciting. Awesome, and thanks for dropping the link, Peter. Oh, yeah um Perfect. yeah that's that's great for people to check out because it's it's a really unique property with 2700 acres five beaches that they have on the property and just like really curating every aspect of the entirety of the experience so we just see so much potential and nicaragua as a whole in this retreat center that's really just like such a staple it seems like in the overall culture which is awesome and exciting that's awesome just real quick what was the travel like? What was the flight time? What what did the logistics kind of look like from leaving your place in Florida to arriving at the um, property? Yeah, I think that's a, a really great place to start with Rancho because there's just it is an adventurous property, and so from from Fort Lauderdale, we had, they just opened up about three different airlines that. Um, now have access to Managua, the capital of Nicaragua. So with that, we had a really easy flight from Fort Lauderdale, which was like under two and a half hours. Um, took about an hour to go through customs and we were in the, the car within like three and a half hours, four hours from when we left our door here in Florida, which was great in, in that sense. It did take about two and a half hours from the airport. Um, with the transfer that the hotel uh, or the resort ended up just kind of taking full control over and had a really great um, great experience to and from the resort. But that is like one of the aspects that we do feel like you need to spend at least four days there to make yeah. it fully worth it and to engulf yourself in it just because there is a two and a half hour kind of time travel on both ends. And we were very lucky flying in and out of um, Fort Lauderdale, our videographer flew from uh, Denver and he had 
a 14 an additional yeah he had like a 14 hour travel day just because of the flights that they're slowly bringing back but that's one of the promising things about nicaragua as a whole is that they're really diving into just opening up a lot of flight paths that they closed down since covid so that's that's been one of the positives for sure yeah that's awesome that's that's great that sounds um very manageable from south florida or even like in new york anything from the east coast i mean you're looking at a three-hour flight and if they're able to get you to the property once you're through customs in two and a half hours that's awesome so um it looks looks incredible i'm jealous (laughs) and and for very fortunate sleepers like dylan he's literally hunched over his, his head's banging against the window in the car for the two and a half hour drive and i'm like i just need someone to talk to <laughs> so hopefully you can sleep through it but it was pretty easy for yeah. us um and it was good timing also where all of the food was open as we arrived at the resort so we were welcomed with like a full meal uh that was followed by a nap so it was it was a good starting point yeah and a really like two random points that we can hit just talking more about rancho is that um when you're leaving the airport they have a sign that says rancho 120 kilometers to the right and just like pretty much a straight direction so rancho has done such an incredible job of just building tourism in Nicaragua as a whole and just kind of being that foundation. And with that, they employ over 900 um, local Nicaraguan residents. So that's that's just like the way that they have built their um, entire company. They own the construction company that's producing the houses and all of the um all of the different buildings and structures on the property which is a third of their entire um, staffing is about 300 contracted um builders so they they're really doing a lot to put back into the community and be like this blueprint for sustainability and resort um just kind of a a full sustainable resort which is really cool yeah supporting the community exactly yeah and another interesting thing last (laughs) thought is right across the street from the property um there is a um, foundation called fun limon and it's essentially um empowering the schools Um, and giving them kids resources to actually like have an education. And so 50% of the booking costs go directly to Fun Limon, which is kind of an absurd percentage when you think about it. Um, And very impressive and they don't flex it in any way. It was actually a little bit difficult to, we had to do a lot of research to crack uh, that code and like figure that out, but very admirable nonetheless. Yeah, we could talk about Rancho Santana in Nicaragua right now for probably like 12 hours straight. So we'll we'll save everybody the time. And at the end, if anyone wants to hit us with more Nicaragua questions, we're like. We'll so did you to- did you stay in one of these uh, houses? So we stayed. So the inn has 17 houses on basically it's like the hotel portion like a compound i'd say yeah it's like the hotel portion or resort portion of the entire property and there's 2700 acres so that's maybe 20 acres of it and then there's private homes that are residents right. that you can rent as well but we stayed in the inn which is like gotcha. stepped away from the beach and stuff as well Okay, awesome. So now we'll cover kind of the year in review um, and kind of what we've accomplished so far. So it's been a really gradual kind of building to how we've gotten to where we're at right now with uh, the website launching in early February, us pretty much starting monthly, it was bi-weekly town halls to start, and then we've slowly moved into monthly town halls and really just honing into um our newsletter and now retreat reviews being such a large portion of how we're just building our entire company and really getting new attention and attractions to the experiences that we're going to launch early next year and with the retreat reviews we've seen great success and it's continued to allow us to create additional content and next year we're ready to just dial in and figure out the systems and consistencies that we can do to continue producing the retreat reviews because one, we're enjoying it a lot and we've just been able to use this as a very holistic way of building 
uh, business development partnerships and content and just really like being out there boots on the ground connecting with um with these properties and from that we've just had so much exploration and understanding just like the direction of how we're kind of building in each of those senses yeah i think retreat reviews have allowed us to understand like what type of content people genuinely want to engage with um because it's kind of hard to grasp that and we've tried a lot of things as far as content goes. Do we want to be primarily on Twitter, Instagram, all these different places? And it's been a lot of trial and error. Um, and we're really feeling like we're hitting a stride with the content with retreat reviews specifically. Awesome. So a big part of our branding is Quest and Scavenger Hunts. So it's kind of fun to see the progression that we've had starting in April, having a literally physical egg hunt in Cheeseman Park in Denver, where we hid golden eggs all around the biggest, one of the biggest parks in Denver. Um, I think we hid almost a hundred of them yeah. and we had notes um, in the eggs with clues that led to us. And we had a table, we were making like fresh quesadillas, we had cocktails, and we were really just hanging out and engaging with people. And we wanted to see like who would engage. And it was yeah. so interesting to find out like who would make it to the point of finding us. So that was our starting point. And then in June, we ended up working with Yellow Heart, which is primarily a kind of NFT ticketing platform. So they focus on the music end of things for the most part. Um, and so they had provided our NFT and we sent um, Good Life Guests, which is the VIP program at Electric Forest, um, through a scavenger hunt using our concierges essentially as like different stops along the way. Um, and so we featured a magician, our amazing friend Alexis, who's an artist who was doing murals, um, where you can see her here. Um, and we had Guayaquil, one of our brand partners, um, donate product where we were able to distribute that at one of the stops. And then at the ending point, um, people receive their digital token, but also a physical wooden token as well. That's kind of become part of our branding, I would yeah. say, where we've had custom ones for Electric Forest, VCon, and now Art Basel. So um, that's been really cool. And then our third being a completely virtual AR scavenger hunt in the city of Denver and a little bit beyond uh, Denver, where there's some stops in the outskirts. Um, but we teamed up with an awesome crew yonder, where essentially from a web, web browser, you can look and see where all of the points are. And the goal is to make it to one of those points and allow for yourself to experience where you are, right? So you could just collect your, check it off the list and walk right by that art walk, or you could go down that alley and see all of this local art. Similarly, you could just collect one of the tokens and be on your way and hop right back into your car. Or you could go down that trailhead and see what's next with the golden rock kind of um, surrounding you. So it was choose your own adventure, but it was completely digital. So we've kind of had a, um, a really interesting transition from very physical to a hybrid to very digital. And really the goal of this is just to understand like what are people enjoying engaging with um and so that's been productive and we're kind of finding that the middle place is hybrid yeah yeah no that's a really great way to put it and just this year as a whole we've spent a lot of time figuring out who exactly are our people that want to engage with our brand are and this was just such a great way to like test out all of these different concepts and theories And then um, we've dove into our music festivals and just still staying relevant in the industry and uh, starting with Branquility this year, doing a music and web three panel um, out at Branquility. So we helped host and shout out to, I think Defresh is in this room, but Defresh um, had, I was supposed to do the panel with Defresh and he ended up getting COVID. So I have the best replacement <laughs> right here that stepped in and helped um helped bring that all together but we had a really great time um taking the knowledge that we've had and really bringing that into uh an in-person pretty much like seminar like 
very, very casual, casual, but engaging and a great way to uh, to onboard and just explain how Web3 can um, can be integrated into the festival that we were sitting at right there. So we came up with a lot of good use cases while we were sitting there and just building, continuing to build our network. And um, with Electric Forest, do you want to? Yeah, so with Electric Forest, um, that is a massive festival. It's actually the one that myself and Dylan met at. So it's especially special. Um, but with that, we have the Good Life program, which is the VIP, but it is a massive VIP. There's about, there's over eight different VIP glamping options. So everything from real camping to multiple different glamping levels to actually being in a cabin or more of like a hotel style room. So there's so many options in addition to also having our in the venue type of activations where um, we have a VIP lounge at the main stage in addition to viewing areas and such. So with that one, um, we oversaw the guest operations and guest experience uh, with a staffing team of over 30 people. And our first Connecting Roads employee is, was Kristen Ahrens, who's in this chat um, right now. She is so near and dear to our hearts. And she's one of those people where we can be on a team with her and don't have to say something. And she understands where we're at and she can fill in those holes. And it was just so special to bring one of our dear friends on and like believe in our vision. Um, and it, it means so much to us. Like, beyond what I can even put into words. And it was so special. And we were in the trenches overseeing such a hard scope, but still crushing. And that that's special. You can't really put that into words. Um, so thank you, Kristen. Huge shout out, Kristen. Thank you, thank you to both of you. I'm so equally grateful for you two as well. Uh, <laughs> we do it every time, so. <laughs> and then Firefly Music Festival, uh, we oversaw the hospitality for the entire event. So not just VIP, but kind of the bigger picture, everything from golf carts to suites um, to VIP um, and everything kind of in between. So that was a bigger scope and us just kind of staying connected, continuing to really work in the music industry because we love it. Um, and we love those connections that are always being made. Awesome. And so as we kind of mentioned earlier, a big thing that we're working on is these retreat reviews. Um, so we are posting them on YouTube, but also um, posting them on social media as well as content. But our biggest goals are to first showcase incredible properties. Um, so of course, someone like a Rancho Santana is very established. They've been around for 25 years, but we're also pinpointing properties that just started out. So one of the properties that we'll talk about later was a summer, a girl's summer camp that was purchased um, in the last year yeah. and was just kind of at the beginning steps of finding its identity. So we're really targeting interviewing um, property owners and understanding their vision, their draw to that location and why they're doing what they're doing. Um, and in that process, we then have a catalog that we're kind of holistically creating um, that when we have retreat creators um, that we're looking to collaborate with, we can showcase the different properties in a way that, you know, is behind our eyes rather than just a website picture. Okay. Um, so it's been super valuable for us. Um, we've done four property owner interviews so far, one international destination. Something that's kind of cool is that we've interviewed three out of the four uh, people we interviewed are females. Um, and infinite inspiration because as we meet each person, our brains just flow with different ideas of ways we can collaborate and work together and honestly just lift all of these people up um, in the same way. Yeah. So the first retreat review that we did was kind of on a whim and I was sitting there talking to Mo like, we should start a TV show. We should figure out a way to really get media out there. And we had always wanted to do a kind of recreation of um, of a TV show called Restaurants on the Edge. And that came specifically with Christina hitting me up the same day or us finding each other on a Facebook group and having such a great conversation. I was just like, can we come down and visit your property? And then it very organically happened. And in the next two days, we were down there 
um, checking out her property. And that's where Retreat Reviews really was born with uh, Christina at the Colorado Retreat Co. So uh, awesome property, eight, eight uh, guest rooms, um, about two and a half hours from Denver and just a really incredible owner and operator that has such a great vision of bringing artists and entrepreneurs um, to her property to collaborate. Yeah, she's super inspirational, comes from that entrepreneurial incubator kind of realm. And so she was super on the same page with us and just a really interesting property in the sense of she has like a train car on the property and you walk in and it's literally looks like a speakeasy and all of these things kind of already set up for success. But we definitely fell in love with that property unexpectedly. Um, and Dylan is dropping the link now for anyone who wants to check it out. <laughs> awesome. And then the second retreat review we did was Hut and Brickyards. And it was this was kind of on the opposite spectrum where Colorado Retreat Company um, had just been purchased a few months prior to our visit, where Hut and Brickyards was a little bit more established. Um, so this was a bit north of Manhattan. And something very interesting in the history of the property is it was a brickyard for essentially all of the real estate that built um, the main Manhattan properties that still exist today. Um, so all over the property, I believe it was, there's still about 3 billion estimated bricks on the property. So like you'll dig up a little bit of dirt and you'll see a brick emerge. Like it was crazy how many we were finding. Yeah, there was beaches that were still filled with bricks and yeah, yeah it was all over the place. Yeah, and something we really loved about this property was like the guest experience where like there's a flag in your tiny house. So all of the homes were tiny houses. So it was not a hotel and you're given a flag and you can put a flag in front of your room that says thirsty and a little golf cart will come and kind of give you a drink. And so they were really tapping into guest experience, which is what really intrigued us from the first yeah. place. And then uh, the next place we went to was actually on our same trip visiting Brookledge or visiting Hutton Brickyards and this was Brookledge. Mo had found this property just off of Airbnb and um, Helen was launching uh, Brookledge earlier this year. I think she bought it in like March or April and has since, it was a previously a um, girls summer camp that is now being renovated into a nature retreat center. So there's a lot of history of the girls summer camp that Helen is taking into heart of just like how she's developing and building this property up. She's a previous uh, school teacher. elementary teacher. So she really like has that connection to it. And I feel like she just amplifies the spirit of this property. And we had just such a great time learning about what she's, her envisions of uh, just continuing to build this property up. And in the short amount of time that she's had this place, she has done so many renovations she has a neighbor that has basically all of the um, equipment that she needs to to build and take this property to the next um, next wave. So if I had a list of like up and coming uh, retreat founders, like Helen would 100 percent be on it. She's crushing it. And I feel like she's doing it in a very unique and organic way that an intentional more than anything to Helen's a superhuman. I yeah. saw today she actually <laughs> opened up her third cabin. Wow. Yeah. So recent update, but she's just incredible. <laughs> and then the last retreat review is uh that we've done so far was with Luke Mash and um and the Rancho property and what is really awesome and just kind of really tells how Rancho is building their team up and just the entire culture is that Luke started with them as an intern 10 years ago and uh, is from Colorado, was brought out there just because he was had a fork in the road and got to decide whether he wanted to intern in Nicaragua or take a management job in Colorado that really didn't have as much growth that was possible. So Luke took the the leap of faith and he's been with Rancho since then and has moved through, it sounded like talking to him like six, seven, eight different positions yeah. of just continuously giving him additional um, additional roles and, and uh, opportunities, opportunities 100%. And so that was really exciting to hear 
from somebody that's just been so deeply ingrained in their system that he's now taken on the CEO role and has just such a, a foundation of what he, what his goals are with Rancho and is getting to be able to test out his own, um, I feel like, dreams there as well, which is pretty cool that they're giving him a lot of, lot of flexibility and play to designing the entire experience there. Awesome. And then this is just a brief overview of the people we've worked directly with in 2022, partners and clients. So um, kind of starting off with transformational travel, which we'll touch on a little bit deeper. Um, but this was a course that I completed for a certification um, in transformational design. Um, Yonder being the provider of our AR, uh, BFF and World of Women being the communities that we partnered with for our Art Basel event. Um, Yellow Heart, who was the basically the fuel to our NFT at Electric Forest. Layer 15 at Art Basel, day one, which is an entrepreneurial journey yep. that Dylan will touch on later, that he's been really just crushing. Um, Firefly Music Festival and then Guayaquil, which is a brand partner of ours. And we also want to give a huge shout out to this advisory team that has really given us the, the strength and honestly just the consistency of being able to test out our, our concepts and really being able to brainstorm. So huge shout out to Peter and David that are in this room right now, always showing up to our town halls and always giving us just such an incredible amount of support and allowing us to test out so much stuff. So just a huge shout out to you guys. It's been a really great year and thank you for being one of the first people to believe in us and to really spend spend a lot of time with us and help shape the concepts. My pleasure. Appreciate it. You guys yeah, are, uh, you know, infectious enthusiasm and why so many people are now on this call. So uh, it's I'm, I'm happy to be along for your ride. The ride's getting crazy. For <laughs> I know it is. I know it is. I know it is. I expect nothing less. <laughs> I love it. So I can briefly touch on, we're celebrating the wins at the end of the year. So um, briefly mentioned earlier, transformational travel um, is a course that I had taken this year with the goals of really building an international network. Um, also learning how communities and land um, can be traveled with positive impact um, and also just overall really um, kind of understanding a little bit deeper about like what we can do to uh, refine our experiences in a way that can allow at least a catalyst for transformation because transformation can't be not someone can go on a trip that has the capabilities of transformation but at the end of the day they have to be willing to you know receive that and put in that extra work for themselves. So kind of learning how we can set that foundation. Um, so we are now officially accredited as a transformational um, design council. Um, and that's a very exciting thing for us because we really do plan to implement that in every experience that we do. And then I'll hand it off to Dill, who is a 2023 entrepreneur <laughs> to watch. So I've been in uh, day one since April or August, and it's been just such a great foundation of working and having a community of startup entrepreneurs and a lot of mentors that have gone through different startups. And they've really given us a great foundation and a lot of these really unique boot camps and tracks that have put us through um, continuous like visionary and mission statements and testing out concepts and validating a lot of a lot of it has been validating and just continuing to go back to understanding the data and understanding um, how to navigate these unique waters. So um, it's been just such a great journey. In 2023, I have a new boot camp coming up with uh, with the Vayner X company, which is really exciting. They're bringing in six different uh, Vayner Media um, executives to help just kind of guide any of their day one and just be like the featured speakers so a lot of really cool things with um with that in 2023 coming and they've just been a really incredible 
um, community that I also feel like is very early stages of their growth and that they're going to be very successful in how they're bringing on new people and really teaching and driving community. So they've been an inspiration of how we're building and just understanding how another startup is operating while also being a part of them. So it's been really fun. <laughs> and uh, the road ahead. So we have so many things for 2023 that we just want to start screaming out, but we're going to slow it down and start with just uh, quarter one. We're going to do our retreat announcements. So we have um a few retreats in the mix of what we're going to be announcing uh for quarter one so it might be the january town hall might be the february town hall but very early on in the year we'll we'll start announcing um some of these retreats the creators and the um the artists that are going to be a part of these retreats and then slowly revealing our partners as well and this is all leading into launching our experience marketplace and um, I could go on a long stream about our experience marketplace, but we'll keep it pretty brief for right now, where a lot of these retreats that we're gonna announce will then live on this marketplace and we'll be able to test out and make sure that it's robust enough for everything that we want to continue to build off of it. So we're gonna be, be moving into it in a, in a great like slow format of announcing two to three retreats, revealing a lot of the partners that we'll be working with and then just honing into making sure that everything's working how we want it to on the marketplace as a whole. Awesome. And then we just wanted to take a minute to just shout out all of our amazing artists and contributors. So Alexis was the creator of our Electric Forest Quest NFT, and she also was a live painter um, in our Electric Forest VIP lounge. And she is just like a supporter from the very beginning and forever appreciating her and also just uplifting her art. Um, so this is a look at the face that she created for Electric Forest. Check her out on Instagram and social media because she is super talented. Um, and we're just grateful to have her um, in our lives really. Yeah, and it was very serendipitous that our first I would consider this our first NFT official NFT was with Alexis. And <laughs> this was the first uh, festival that she was painting as an artist at. So that was one of her dreams. And we're also getting to just collaborate with our friends and really awesome projects. So it was very, very full circle for us to be able to um, to do that. Seeing her thrive. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And then Shannon is another friend of ours, but actually we kind of sought after her through her art. Um, so she's also uh, local to Colorado and she is the person who created the Connecting Roads uh, logo in addition to the first Ascent NFT um, image that you can see here. So it's kind of meant to look like a stamp and a big part of our branding is incorporating both the sea and mountains um, because we really do have just this connection to both things, uh, which is why we bounce between Colorado and Florida, um, because we can't decide. So we decided <laughs> we don't have to, at least not right now. So that's a big thing in our branding that you'll continue to see. Um, and she's just an incredible creator and human being. So excited to shout her out. And then um, we have Brad, our videographer. I met Brad through an Instagram post and <laughs> here we are shooting content in Colorado on the right and an awesome picture of Brad on the left. <laughs> but Brad has been just a really great staple of, he's helping us edit a lot of our retreat reviews and then also helping us create the content on the front end as well. Yeah, and I think something really cool about Brad is he has this passion for videography and wants to kind of launch himself very similarly to the way we want to yeah. kind of grow into um, what we're working for. So he's believed in our vision since us meeting in real life in May at VCon um, and going to Nicaragua with him was really just very validating where, you know, it's important if you have a videographer, you need to be able to um, have someone who's professional when you're meeting with these high level people for interviews um but also someone you enjoy being around and so it was a very validating trip for us spending that time you know those tired 
travel moments and really just enjoying being with him. So um, that, I feel like that was yeah. a lot of progress for us, just really understanding that this is someone we want to grow with um, and him really understanding our vision. And then our featured brand, so Guayaquil um, is some is a brand we've been working with since 2017. I know Craig is not here, but shout out to Craig, who's been a friend of ours since then. Um, so Guayaquil is uh, yerba mate for anyone who's not familiar. Um, it's essentially the coffee of Paraguay and um, also Argentina, some of South America as well. Um, but we were introduced the, to this drink in the festival industry um, and honestly have grown a really deep connection with it. And so traditionally in South America, it's drinking out of a um, hollowed out gourd uh, with a filtered straw. And it's so it's like loose leaf tea um, and something really cool that we were able to do at Art Basel um, a couple of months ago is we finally got to meet Craig in person. <laughs> after five years of only communicating with him digitally, but providing us with thousands of dollars worth of product. Um, so he was able to come to an event uh, for a community that we supported super fast. Um, and we did a Yerba Mate ceremony with that community with Craig. Um, so that was just a really cool experience for us full circle and a fun brand that we really like to uplift because um, yerba mate is meant to be shared and it's meant to be drinking together um, with the goal of essentially having creative ideas um, and building connection with people. And of course, connecting is really the foundation of who we are. So, um, yeah. Yeah, it was a great full circle moment. And while I was sitting there during the ceremony, I decided that once I get a new gourd, I am going to Com combat my addiction with candy and sugar with yerba mate so that will be one of my journeys for 2023 we'll keep you posted it's gonna go great and i think we have the special announcement now oh yeah this is the major special announcement so drum roll mo so a little okay. bit of background we love our logo but we felt that we needed a mascot Yes. And so we needed a mascot <laughs> that empowered who we are, kind of on a more personal level. So talking about the Yerba Mate and also the reveal of the animal, you can okay. <laughs> uh, a roadrunner, <laughs> which um, the biggest characteristics of a roadrunner is positive, uplifting of their friends, and spontaneous, all things that we are. <laughs> And so we do want to have him drinking out of a yerba mate gourd, kind of as an accent there. So that's kind of just a fun thing that we wanted to share because it was kind of, I don't know, a yeah. silly thing that meant a lot to us. <laughs> um, and we thought it was a good way to kind of round off uh, this presentation. Yeah. So a fun announcement. Yeah, so the Roadrunner is fueled by yerba mate and that's what keeps him going. So <laughs> we got a lot of a lot of fun ways that we're gonna add um, Mr. Roadrunner and he doesn't have a name yet. It's this is the first time that we're bringing him really to to life in, in a public format. So we're, we're excited to just see where we're having a mascot can go. <laughs> <laughs> and that really is our recap for today. We just kind of wanted to share mostly highs yeah. to be honest and just exciting things ahead for us. But if anyone has any questions in regards to the things we covered or really anything, we can open it up um, to that now. When, Peter, when are you coming back to Denver? When the snow melts <laughs> in April. Oh, okay. <laughs> Probably beginning of April yeah. where, yeah, last year we made it the last week of March and we entered the border as it was snowing. So we're thinking we just come like a couple weeks later this year. But of course, if there's something that brings us snow in, in uh, New Orleans tomorrow, I think. So <laughs> I don't think you can escape the snow. So do you have any plans when you come back? What, what are you going to do? To Denver? Yeah. Um, so we have... We have just like a really open January where there's like three major projects that we'll sidebar with you about them and just kind of like hash hash out pretty in depthly. But we're kind of at like a standpoint of these three major um, projects potentially like leading to us 
relocating or focusing specifically on one of those projects as a whole. So um, it's very all very exciting things. Um, none of them very stationed in Colorado though, but some okay. of them that we can do remote. So, um, but we are also looking at hosting a retreat in Colorado uh, in August. So that that is a big driving factor of us being back in Denver as well as is, is having that um, launch pad in Colorado. And we're kind of figuring out if we're going to end up doing a experience in Florida as a beta test with one of our partners here before we leave, or that'll be something that we have right when we come back. But we have plenty of time now to um, lock in the retreat center that we want to for Colorado as well for August. Yeah, but with that, if we don't end up being on site <laughs> at this one opportunity, my heart always calls to Colorado when the weather <laughs> becomes warm. Um, the mountains are something that we'll always be drawn to. So we'll be we'll be back. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and thank you for the kind words, Natasha, Taylor, Soapy, all of you guys. We we really appreciate your support um, from the ground floor. Like truly, you don't know how much it means to us just to have people behind us. Um, and 2023, is, I think, is going to be a really special year. Yeah. So we're really looking forward to it. Well, I don't want to take up anyone else's time. I just thank you all for being here the day before winter break. Um, so <laughs> we're sending love. And if anyone wants to follow up on any of the things discussed, we're very accessible. So feel free to reach out. Most saying winter break because she heads home tomorrow. So yes. <laughs> it's her winter break. <laughs> I'm going home, mom and dad. I'm coming for you. That's true. Yeah. Well, I hope you all have a good night and a happy holiday. And we're looking forward to 2023 and fun things to come. So um, enjoy and we'll see you soon. Congrats, guys. Thank, Thank you. you so Can't much. Can't wait to see the new mascot. Woo <laughs> you guys are awesome. Sorry. I think my parents signed off. Yeah. Okay, delete.